Hello guys, dear Laravel developers, I have a question for you. How often do you visit php.net website? Probably to look up for some reference or parameter for some PHP function, right? But how well do you know the PHP underlying things that are commonly used in Laravel? In this video, I came up with four things that you absolutely must know from PHP world, specifically from object-oriented programming, from OLP, that are used really widely in Laravel, so you need to understand them to be able to use them. Let's see what I came up with. The first thing that you need to know from PHP world, which is often used in Laravel, is constructors, how they work and how to pass parameters to them. So for example, in the events, here I am in the official documentation of Laravel, there is a file class order shipped, which is an event, and you need to pass the parameter to that event. So for example, order shipped, but which order? So you need to understand how construct work, how do you pass the parameter here, and how do you assign that parameter to the private or public property of that class of that event. And similar example is, for example, in mailable class. So to send mails, for example, you want to send an email of order shipped. Again, it comes from the Laravel documentation. You pass the order here and then assign that to the public or private variable of the class. And you may find that pattern also in other classes of Laravel, like queues and others. So it's a really important thing to know. Because then in the middle of that class, in any method, you can use this order as a property of that class. Next thing that is very important from object-oriented programming in PHP, which is used in Laravel, is public or private methods or properties. And public is the default value, but the typical usage of private methods, for example, and here I'm showing the open source Titan Nova packages example, a login controller, which has handle provider callback, so login with GitHub, and here it has create or update user method, which is in the same controller just as private function. So to separate the logic, so to prevent this method from being too long, like with 20 lines of code, separate methods were introduced, and those are introduced as private methods of the same class, and there's even one level deeper, so inside of that private function, there's socialite user attributes, which is another private function. So to separate the actions logically, it's pretty common to use private functions all over Laravel. There also may be a protected function, but it's not that widely used, so public and private are probably the most important to know. And also you need to understand the static variable. And here's an example from the framework itself, from Laravel class str, which we often use to manipulate the string. So for example, if we want to use a str off, a str after, after last and all of those methods, they are all static. Static means that it doesn't rely on any state of the application, other variables, it's just like a helper. So you can consider static functions, you may use them in your models, I've seen that used pretty widely. So it's mostly like a set of helper functions, just organized as a class with static keyword for all the functions. The next thing from PHP you need to understand in Laravel is namespaces. So there are a lot of namespaces generated for us, but if you don't have namespace generated, you need to understand how they work and what namespace actually means. So here is an example from Laravel Breeze, and it generates the controller of registered user controller, posted in app HTTP controllers auth, and then registered user controller is the file name, and the namespace should correspond to that folder, so app HTTP controllers auth, just all uppercase with backslashes. So if you generate, for example, some controller, PHP artisan make controller, some controller, Laravel automatically generates namespace for you. So if we go to some controller now, it generates app HTTP controllers by default. If you generate, for example, some other controller within some folder, so auth something, it also helps you with a namespace. So some other controller is generated automatically in the folder with the correct namespace. But if you don't use artisan commands to create a new file, for example, there is no make service and you want to create, for example, new file app, new file services, some service PHP. So you go PHP, then class some service, and then you would have conflicts if you don't add namespace here on top. So you need to add namespace. What is your folder? App services, right? So you need to do app backslash services. And then you would be able to initialize that service from controller or from wherever you need. So don't forget about namespaces, whether they are generated automatically or not. 
And final thing I want to mention from PHP World, which is really used in Laravel widely, is traits. I remember back in the day traits were considered kind of an anti-pattern and not really object-oriented programming because they don't really extend anything and they are kind of includes in the overall object-oriented programming structure. But with time the opinions changed and traits are totally normal to use and the example of that is Spotty Media Library well-known package and see how it is included in the model. So the official documentation for preparing your model to be used with Spotty Media Library, you need to add just two things. You need to add the interface, implements has media, this one, and then you need to add a trait, interacts with media. If we take a look at the GitHub, at the official GitHub, the has media is the interface of what methods your model should implement. So media relationship, add media, copy media, has media, and a lot of them. But of course, you don't have those in your model, right, by default. That's why you add use interacts with media and interacts with media is a trait. It's a huge, huge trait, interacts with media, which actually has the default implementation for that. For all those methods or majority of them or even more on top, so media relationship is defined with polymorphic relations and other stuff. So this is probably a good example of a big trait added to your model to enable some functionality. So how traits work in PHP and Laravel, it's really useful to know. And this is an example which I will link actually in the description below and you may study how exactly it works. So these are four tips I came up with from PHP world which are used in Laravel. Do you have any more? Shoot in the comments below and let's discuss and subscribe to the channel and support the channel financially so I would be able to shoot daily videos for months and years to come. Check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now from my team, Admin Panel Generator, LiveWire Kit, and one of my 20 courses on Teachable Platform. See you guys in other videos.